hugely warm welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going on a little bit of a fabulous culinary um, and drinking tour of the Cotswolds this time. So much as there are some fabulous um, uh, opportunities in the Chilterns, the Cotswold certainly does not um, does not lag behind. So um, let's have um, let's have a little look. And as we as we said when we um, talked about the the Chilterns, I mean there are some glorious um, venues depending on what you're looking for and, and the type of food that your clients um, clients would like but I think the wonderful thing about the Cotswolds is you really do have every kind of style and um, uh, and and flavor and, and and so on that you can possibly imagine so um, we um, we love arranging all of the um, the eating and drinking side of things. It means that we have to go and sample them, which is obviously a rather fabulous part of part of the job. But it is an important part of the itinerary. You know, you, you're not your guests aren't necessarily going to come to um, the Cotswolds just for the food, although some some may do that. Um, but it is it makes for a really special a special trip if you've had some rather lovely memorable um, lunches and dinners along the way. So um, we will happily share share our knowledge with you when it comes to planning um, planning your your itineraries. And I do warn you, there are some rather lovely pictures of um, rather fabulous food. So if you're feeling a bit peckish, it might be a little bit worse by the time you get to uh, get get to the end of this. So as we did in the Chilterns, we're going to um, explore some of the, the different options, look at the fabulous fine dining at, um, at Mo and the dining room and, and so on. Um, some really quite unusual uh, offerings as well that are very typically uh, typical of the Cotswolds. So um, certainly recommend those. And we have to have afternoon tea, obviously, which is served in Tewkesbury uh, this time. And then um, uh, an opportunity to do a bit of uh, wine and gin tasting at, at the end. So um, the Cotswolds, as and I'm sure many of you have been um, have been to the Cotswolds, it's um, it really is quite an extraordinary place. I was very lucky to be um, born and brought up down in the, the southern part of the Cotswolds. Um, and I always have a bit of a challenge about which is better, the Chilterns or the Cotswolds, but I think I'm allowed to. So um, uh, they're both they're both fabulous. But the difference um, with the Cotswolds is the very distinctive Cotswold stone, that beautiful honey coloured um, uh, architecture, whether it's a, a building that's 500 years old, through to one that was built last year. It's um, it's it's beautifully distinctive, and what makes so many of the villages and the fabulous village pubs look so so beautiful. And there are, as I say, a plethora of fabulous um, foodie establishments to go for. Um, yet again, we prove that you don't have to be in London to eat well in um, in in the UK. There are fifty. 50 Michelin stars across um, across the Cotswolds. Um, everything from um, the uh, olive tree in Bath um, through to uh, Champignon Sauvage in, um, in Cheltenham. There's a, a, a real fabulous, um, fabulous choice. So it really is about style. And um, what we're going to go through is, is just a few of the different um, options that you can choose um, and your clients can choose from um, uh, for, to really appreciate all of the different styles of, of the Cotswolds. Now, this is one of our real favourites. And um, Niall Keating, who is the executive chef at Watley Manor, um, I mean, he happens to cook in one of the most beautiful hotels um, in the heart of the little market town of, of Malmesbury. Um, and he's also been a part of um, a, a series that's been running in the UK for about 20 odd years called the Great British Menu. And every year, the um, chefs from all across the country 
compete to serve one of the six courses of um, this great British menu that is then served to a selected group of people. And um, so the, the chefs battle to represent either the south of England or the central region or Scotland and, and so on. And now Keating was, was um, selected to, um, to represent the central region. And then after the um, 2019 series, he was voted the champion of champions. So that means he was selected by all of his fellow chefs to be one of the best in the country. So Watley Manor, oh, it's, I mean, A, it's beautiful, um, and B, the, uh, the two, now two-star Michelin starred um, the dining room, the restaurant at, at Watley Manor is, um, is, is absolutely beautiful. And on the basis that he also has a hand um, in the uh, food in the brasserie as executive chef, and the afternoon tea, um, we probably sample all three, I think, while, um, while they're staying there. It's a, it really is just the most lovely, lovely setting. And then heading a little bit further north in the Cotswolds, or quite a bit further north in the Cotswolds, Dormy House in, um, in, on the um, Farncombe Estate, just outside Broadway, has a really fabulous, um, very slightly more unusual, um, style of, um, of, of eating. It is a chef's table, but as opposed to a chef's table being separated within a restaurant, uh, Mo is just the chef's table. Um, it seats 12 and the 12 guests sit down together at 7.30 and um, are served the most incredible, oh, fabulous, uh, eight courses that are, are created Depending on the season um, and um, and and obviously from the from the locality as well, so it's a little bit of um, like going to a dinner party um, with people maybe that you don't know quite so well, but you're looking forward to a fabulous feast and getting to know some people and a lovely um, American couple who were over with us um, in September last year. They were celebrating their golden wedding anniversary, which was rather special. And they went to Mo and they, they just loved it. They said the, um, the food was out of this world and probably the best they ate throughout their entire stay. And that included um, Clifton House, the Savoy, um, they ate in the Shard and all, all over the place, but they said Mo was, was absolutely amazing. But they met some really fascinating people as well. So um, uh, Linda certainly said it, it stood out for them as, as one of the experiences of, of their trip. And they did a good 14 days and they crammed a whole lot into those 14 days. So um, I think that says, that says a lot. It's not for everybody. If people like the bars of a busy restaurant, then you're not gonna get that in Mo. but um, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly, certainly wonderful. Now we mentioned the um, uh, Calcutt Manor, um, which is just outside the beautiful little market town of Tetbury. Um, it's about five miles from, uh, from Watley Manor in, in Malmesbury. And it's, um, it's an old converted, farm. Um, it's been a hotel now for um, about 20 years or so and is incredibly well established as um, it's a lovely family hotel. So if you've got clients who are traveling, um, traveling with children, uh, we'd always recommend Calcutt because they've got fabulous facilities for the children to enjoy um, but they've, um, uh, and, and childcare facilities and all that sort of thing. But the conservatory is, um, they've, they've sort of set it apart a little bit because it's, there is nothing childlike about the conservatory. It's a wonderfully um, grown up, relaxed, um, uh, wonderful place to, um, to eat. And actually just to share um, a personal memory I have of the conservatory, my, um, my family live quite close, my parents live quite close to the conservatory and they celebrated their golden wedding anniversary about uh, three years ago. And it was obviously very special. They um, invited um, uh, lots of friends um, that they've met across their, their 50 years to celebrate. We had a, a, a lovely lunch and there was a wedding going on on the same day. 
uh, within the grounds. It was it was just lovely. And the bride and groom were so excited that my parents were there celebrating their golden wedding anniversary um, with the anticipation that they would be in the same boat in 50 years time, which was just wonderful. So um, they insisted on having a picture taken with my parents. Um, I think the groom did look a little bit scared at one point about the prospect of the next 50 years, but they, <laughs> overall it was very happy. But the conservatory is, is beautiful and I have lots of personal experience of, of fabulous food and it's a great, it's a great hotel. It's certainly one that we, we recommend a lot. And then going for something really quite, um, quite, quite different. Time, um, the Time Hotel is, um, is a village within a village. It's on the Southwark Manor um, estate. And it's, um, it's like a little hamlet. There are lots of beautiful um, uh, smallish buildings that house um, the accommodation, the restaurants and, um, and so on. But it's all about as many of these places are now, like, like Heckfield and the Newt and, and so on. It's all about sustainability. And Time have created a, um, a, a very special place that um, certainly in my experience of, of other hotels, um, certainly in England, I can't necessarily say across the UK, I, I haven't seen another hotel that has created this sort of village within a village type environment. And there's cookery school, the food is amazing. Charlie Hibbert, the chef, is actually a, the son of the owner. Um, but uh, he hasn't got there through any nepotism. He has got there through his own own um, fair hand at cooking, which is just wonderful. I mean, he cooked at Quo Vardis in London and, and so on. So uh, he has one heck of a reputation and it's, um, it's very well deserved. And time, again, isn't to everybody's tastes, as you can see from the picture there. There's there's quite a rustic style, but, um, but it's beautiful um, and another lovely, lovely option. Now, some of you may have um, come across Dalesford. Again, Dalesford is, um, uh, I think, unmatched in, in what it does. But there's, oh, there's a glorious feel about, about Dalesford because um, they attract everyone from the locals going to do their, uh, their weekly shop and choose the best meats and cheeses um, and all sorts of fabulous homemade. I mean, it's the best delicatessen you could ever um, imagine walking into. You could also take out another mortgage you know, if you chose to, to buy absolutely everything there, but it really is wonderful. Um, but they've created out of this orga organic farm and shop, um, they have um, a, the most beautiful um, restaurant and then an out, out side um, uh, courtyard for, um, for for dining as well so there's a cafe and then a more formal um, a formal restaurant the most superb cookery school I mean you can learn everything from the skills of Italian cooking through to mastering the best dinner party on the planet I mean, you name it they they are making room pasta uh, they they do it all and um, it's uh, the the uh, cookery school is all part of the same building, so you really feel part of this this whole organic experience. And um, well, I mean, when Lady um, Lady Carol Bamford set it up all those years ago, I mean, she really was um, setting a trend. Uh, organic was not trendy back then at all. Um, it was viewed as slightly quirky and a bit of an expensive hobby. Well, she has certainly changed all of that and, um, and now attracts um, plaudits from, from the very best in, in the industry. And they also have the most beautiful spa. So um, you can go and have a bit of, your clients can go and have a bit of pampering. And then just a short, a very short walk away, there are some beautiful little cottages um, where your clients can spend um, a night or two and um, they can then sample their own cooking that they've done, created at the cookery school or go into the restaurant um, or um, will come on to the, um, uh, the pub that uh, they own as well. So there are so many different, different options, but Dalesford, you can easily spend um, a, a good day there, I think. Uh, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just wonderful. So, 
the wild rabbit is um it's called a pub but it's um it's a very smart pub um and the food is well not smart in terms of decor necessarily but um it's certainly uh there's a wonderfully colloquial expression that um we english have of posh nosh um and this is posh nosh it's um uh served in a pub but it's jolly good food um so it's all locally sourced it's all organic and um and it's just uh just just wonderful and uh there's also um there was a band in the 90s i think i might be showing my age here of not knowing this um but alex james was um part of a band uh back in the day called blur who were very famous and very successful um and he has now swapped his um, music making days for cheese making days and has become a highly respected cheese maker um and he supplies um all of his cheeses to the uh, to the wild rabbit and to Dalesford as well so um there's a bit of a uh, bit of music history all all involved and that's quite central time and location wise um time and Dalesford um and not that much that far over from from Oxford and so on so um they're all nicely um nicely positioned nice and close um close together now we had to include over farm market because it's as um quirky and quintessentially english as as you can get if your clients have ever watched any um of the wonderfully traditional um, classics on, on uh, film or TV, anything from Jane Austen and they're walking through the, these, these market towns and that sort of thing, that's your over farm market. It's, uh, it's just glorious. And you see um, the real traditions of, um, of food rearing and, um, and preparation and so on. And um, amazingly, it doesn't necessarily go with the farm, but um, you can do micro light flights from, from there too. So if you have a slightly more adventurous client, then, uh, then that's certainly one to, to recommend. Um, and if you're not feeling hungry enough by now, um, a little bit of chocolate cake. Uh, Tewkesbury is the most beautiful, um, again, a, a, a market town, uh, a bit bigger than Henley, but it's it's just lovely right on the river. And um, it's just north of Cheltenham, um, so heading, heading a bit further north. But Lord, if you have a sweet tooth, if your clients want a full-on, proper, quintessentially English afternoon tea, then we will definitely send them to um, Café au Chocolat because it's... Um, it's an experience not not to be forgotten. And they could follow um, a trip to the Cotswolds distillery um, with, with an afternoon tea. Um, in terms of uh, local distilleries, the Cotswolds distillery has probably one of the best reputations. They, um, they're quite adventurous in style and um, they've produced some um, award-winning um uh, uh liquors and 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 so on um all of which are there to to try and and test and if um uh if you've got a client who wants to uh try their hand and get involved then um they can do a bit of a um a gin experience as well so um again I suggest probably the private tours um which are are fully immersive and and a real sort of journey through the whole distilling and brewing process, which is uh, which is just wonderful. But if you have slightly uh, clients who prefer uh, the grape and prefer um, their wine, um, I think you could just imagine sitting on that bench, looking out across the vines with a glass of something. Uh, pink or white maybe I think on a sunny day something nice and chilled um, and you could just sit there and um, while away the hours quite happily so you can either do that or um, go on one of their um, fabulous tours and again we would arrange the, the, the private experience so they really understand from the owners um, what has gone into the vines um, all of the different blending and, and so on. But it really is just, just wonderful. And the brasserie is just fab for, um, um, uh, for a lunch or, or an early, early supper. So um, whatever, however we, we're planning the itinerary, we can, uh, we can make it work. So 
there's our little tour of um, of the Cotswolds from a food and drink perspective. So whether your clients are heading a bit further down south and, and down in, in Bath and um, Bath and Tetbury and so on, there are some fabulous options. And equally, if they're a bit further north around um, Broadway and, and so on, um, they're not going to go hungry, put it that way. And I think we haven't focused so much on, on the pubs, um, but whatever your clients are doing, whether it's a driving tour or a cycling tour of the Cotswolds or visiting one of the, um, the breweries and so on, um, the pubs are a, a really special part of, um, of the experience, I think. So uh, we will always happily make our recommendations depending on, on where your clients are, are going. So please let me know. We've got a couple in the in the chat here. Please let me know. Oh, thank you, Anna. That's that's lovely. And Kathleen, that's very kind. Um, is there anything that um, I can help with? Any questions that you may have from from what we've uh, what we've gone through, or any suggestions if you've been anywhere that uh, that you'd like to share that we haven't included. Nope. It looks like we've uh, we've we've covered it all, which is uh, which is just just wonderful. Um, uh, so Friday we have um, a real treat for you, and uh, we are travelling north of the border up into Scotland on on Friday, and um, we are. 95% sure that one of the most respected um, writers and authorities of whiskey is, is going to be joining us. Charlie McLean, um, if you mention him to anybody who has an interest in, in whiskey, chances are they've read at least one of his books, if not, um, if not more. And um, uh, we will be uh, chatting to him and if there, there is a slight possibility that Charlie might not be able to join us. If he can't, we will be chatting to Vicky Bruce, who amazingly is a descendant of Robert the Bruce, um, who was one of the um, uh, former campaigners, I think one might say, perhaps for, for Scottish independence. Anyway, a big historical figure um, in Scottish history. Um, and we'll be doing a, a wonderful tour of some of the slightly more hidden castles there are there are lots of castles on on the internet on um in scotland but these are a few more of the of the more hidden ones that are incredibly special where your clients will meet the family and um and so on um so that's friday at five o'clock i hope you can join us and Anna, thank you so much for the reminder um we all have a public holiday on monday um, so I hope you're going to make the most of it and have a bit of time off and um, and enjoy. And we will be back again with a vengeance on um, on Wednesday. But uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you on Friday. If you can't make it for any reason, we'll send you and so on. And um, but hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks so much for joining us again, and we'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye bye.